Okay, welcome to part one of uh, this video. Um, in this video, we're not going to explain the file structure as usual because this follows on from the um, previous login tutorial. So, we sh you know, it's basically the same. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to say. Um, what we are going to do, however, is create, well, modify the database that we already have. This is the database that we ended up with at the end of the previous um, tutorial series. Um, we had this users table which had the username and the password it stored in. I've also got open in my browser um, here, other tab, the sort of login page, um, uh, which is what we ended up with again at the end of the previous cookie login tutorial. So what we need to do is modify the database slightly. Um, so what we're going to do is add a new field at the end of the table. Uh, so just hit go here. I'm going to call this user, oops, user email. And this new field is going to be a varchar, and it's going to be the length of 128. Um, I think the maximum for emails is um, 320, although it might be 255. Um, there seems to be quite a lot of confusion on that. But people aren't going to have emails this long. It's just sort of a technicality that they need to be, your, your system needs to accept emails that long, basically. So we went for something a bit less than the maximum, but yeah you can do whatever you like basically for this. <laughs> um, so I'm just going to hit save you can see now we have this new user email um, column added. I haven't got any data in the database at the moment. I removed it all um, because we're going to be changing the registration system so we need to account for that um, here. <laughs> okay so the next thing we need to do is go back to our database view and create a new table and this is going to be called user activations going to have two columns. The first one is going to be the user ID, uh, oops, user ID, and the second one is going to be an activation, an activation code. Um, the user ID is going to be an int of late length 8 as before, and the activation code is going to be a varchar of length 10. Not going to set any primary keys or indexes here. Um, so hit save, um, and then we're going to create a new index because we get this horrible warning, so I'm going to hit on two columns, hit go. I'm going to make the user ID and the code um, sort of unique, create a unique index. Why is that happening? Well, that'll do, unique. Um, strange Firefox bug, by the way, look, it selects itself, and then when you type a letter, so sort of breaks. Anyway, um, that's that. So we're going to create a unique index on these two columns. I've talked about this before. Um, what it does is it forces sort of pairs of values to be unique. So the same user ID can't have two activation codes. Uh, it's just sort of something we're doing. <laughs> um, so we're just going to hit save, and then you see that horrible warning is gone, and we have a nice index created. Okay, so the, the reason we're doing these sort of two tables is that we don't want to have to store like um, another column here for like user active because that would just be like a, a list of ones which would be a bit pointless. So what we do instead is we store the user ID and their activation code in the activations table and the fact that there is a row in that table will indicate that the user has not activated their account yet. So when they do activate their account, what actually happens is they del we delete the row from this table um, sort of where the code is the code they supply. So that'll only work, um, well the idea is that it'll only work for their account, but they could potentially activate someone else's account if they manage to guess the code. But we're going to be generating a random code of length 10, so it'd be quite hard to guess. You can make it longer if you like, but we're going to be using 10 for this. And it's going to be a mixture of uppercase, lowercase letters and numbers. Okay, so that's the database modified. So what we need to do now is go to the registration page and sort of add in the new um, okay what we're doing register um, we need to add in the new field so at the moment we only have um, username password and repeat password we need to add in the um, email field and the validation for it so we're going to do that now. Whoops, um, where have we gone? Here, okay, sorry. Right, the, so we're going to scroll down to here where our form is, copy the username field, 
paste it down, change all these to email, uh, email, email, if it's set email, okay, email, and this obviously needs to say email too. Okay, so just to check this, make sure it looks right, no, no HTML errors, reload a page, we get an email field. At the moment it obviously doesn't do anything, so we need to sort of do that basically. Okay, so when the form is submitted, we do all these validation checks up here, and we want to also validate the email address to make sure that it's, at least in terms of syntax, a valid email address. So we're going to do that using the filter var function. I believe I've mentioned this before, so I'm not going to go into too much detail over it. So we're just going to add an additional check to our sort of error conditions, which is going to be if filter var the email, post email, and then the sort of mode for the function is filter validate email. And if that is false, we're going to add an error to our errors array, which is going to be um, the email address you gave. Entered actually, sounds nicer. Entered does not appear to be valid. Remove that four. Okay, there we go. That's the email address validated. Um, what this won't do is check that the email ad email address actually exists. Um, that's just sort of an efficiency thing for this function. Um, you can do that if you like, but it's not really necessary um, for this anyway. Okay, so um, the final thing we need to do on this registration page, and well, final two things really, is one, remove this login, because we, we want to make sure they validate their account before they log in, so we don't want to log them in now, so we're going to delete that, and then at the add user function is now going to take an email parameter. We're going to add that after the username, so we're just going to add this here, so add the post email variable to this list of parameters. Um, obviously at the moment we haven't coded the new version of add user, so this will cause errors. So we can't test this yet, but that is the um, uh, register page pretty much complete. Okay, so that's that done. Um, you could show like a message, well you'd have to sort of rearrange this slightly, which is the reason I'm not doing it here. Um, like you could show a message here saying, you, you have been registered, please check your email or something like that. But I'll leave that up to you anyway. Okay, so we redirect them to protected, which then redirects them to login. Um, yeah. Okay, so what we're going to do next is... Um, what are we doing? We're going to go to the backend file and create the func well, modify these functions and create the new function that's going to be used. Well, two new functions actually. So the first one we're going to be working with is the add user function. This new email activation thing does add quite a lot of complexity to it, so try and follow along. Um, it's not too complicated, really. Okay, so um, the first thing we need to do is add the email parameter so that we can have the email address, basically. And then we need to add it here, so we're going to escape it because it goes into a query, so it needs to be escaped to prevent SQL injection. I have a video on that as well, so if you're not sure what I'm doing, go and watch that. So email equals um, MySQL real escape string of email, like so. Um, and we will just tap these across to make them lined up because it looks nicer, like so. Okay, um, so now we have the email address, we need to modify our main insert query to add it to the table. So after the user password, we're going to add new column, user email, and then after the password over here, we're going to add a new value of the email address, like so. And now we could test this, but we're not going to at the moment, just in the interest of time, really, because um, there are some of the things we need to do. Okay, so we're inserting this into the users table now, so this should... Um, insert a new row into this users table but we also need to insert a new row into this user activations table which requires the user ID um, and the user ID is generated by MySQL it's an auto-incrementing column here so we need a way of getting that 
Luckily for us, PHP has a function for it. Um, it's called the MySQL insert ID function, which is a kind of misleading name because it implies that it's going to insert an ID, so whatever that means, but never mind. I think it should be called last insert ID or last ID, but it's not up to me. <laughs> um, and what this will do is get the last um, auto incrementing value that the MySQL server generated, which can be quite useful in quite a lot of situations. Um, it doesn't take any, but it can take one parameter, it takes an optional parameter, but in this case it doesn't have to, basically, um, and it will return the last AI ID, as I said. So we're going to define a new variable called user ID, and that's going to be equal to MySQL insert ID, like so. Oops. And then we're going to be using this in a second query. So new new query, the MySQL query function. And this query is going to be an insert, be inserting it into the user activations table. So we'll spell activations right. Uh, that looks right to me. So we're going to be inserting into user activations. The columns are going to be the user ID and the activation code. Um, and the values whoops, are going to be um, an integer, so that's the user ID variable. Uh, learn to type, there we go. So user ID, and the other parameter is going to be a string, which we haven't defined yet. So what we need to do before we insert this is define a sort of random string of sort of numbers and letters basically. Um, and the way we're going to be doing that is using a couple of array functions that PHP provides. Um, so we're going to define like a character set array. So let's just define that here. char set equals, and what we're going to be, um, well, the re we're going to be using the range function. And what the range function does is returns an array of, okay, examples, range, probably the best way to explain this. Say we did range, um, a to C. This would return an array with three elements. Those elements would be A, B, and C. So if we did A to Z, it'll be the whole alphabet, as in each element of an array um, in lowercase. You can also do uppercase. That'd be the uppercase alphabet. And numbers 0 to 9. That'd be an array containing all the numbers 0 to 9. Okay, so what we need to do is sort of combine these three things to create uh, an array of the alphabet in both uppercase and lowercase and the numbers 0 to 9. Uh, and we're going to do that using the array merge function. What this function does is takes an unlimited number of parameters and it sort of returns an array, um, another array, which is a combination of the arrays you give it, which is quite confusing. Um, I might do a basics video on array manipulation where I'll explain this in more detail, but just for the purposes of this at least, just sort of follow along and see what I'm doing. Okay, so we're going to have range A to Z, so the lowercase alphabet, and then we're going to also have range A to Z in uppercase, and range 0 to 9. Now, in terms of efficiency, the best way to do this would be to define this manually, like typing out every letter, but just for sort of quick speediness, I'm not going to be doing that. Okay, and we're going to be using the array rand function, which picks a given number of elements out of the array and returns their keys. Um, but what we we, don't, we want the values, so the best way that I found to do this is to flip this array, and we're going to do that using the array flip function. Oops, array flip, and what this will do is basically swap the keys and values around, so the values become keys and the keys become values. Okay, um, so then we have basically an array of sort of random, not random, an array of well keys, <laughs> the ch character set. Um, I'm going to end this here. Um, so suspense, cliffhanger ending, kind of. Um, the reason being that I'm running out of time. Um, so join me in part two, where we'll finish off this function and make uh, and code the two new ones that are going to be in this file. Okay, so thanks for watching, and join me in part two.